Hi, so uh, welcome to my really janky setup because OBS does not like me very much. We're just going to, you can see what I'm doing if you look past the borders of this video capturing. Basically, today we're going to be watching some book trailers because book trailers are ridiculous. And by we, I specifically mean, hello. Hi. Do you want to introduce yourself at all? I'm Zander. From Warhammer. From Warhammer. From Warhammer. So you Zander, may have seen me in the Warhammer video. Which you really should have. Not, you know, it's, it's you know, whether video, or not man. you know about Warhammer, you should. So Xander here is my friend, and Xander here, I've had to watch all of these book trailers before, but Xander gets to watch them entirely blind, which is really charming and fun. And uh, book trailers basically were a thing for a while. Uh, they're still being made, by the way. Like, one of these is shockingly recent. But generally speaking, from like the 2010s era of YA, publishers kind of realized that books aren't very visual. Fun fact. Um, who knew? Who knew? Which is why TikToks today advertising books are generally just a bunch of like stolen Pinterest images over some, you know, pop music. Mm. It's because books are good, but not very visually engaging. So publishers experimented with making their own like low budget weird trailers. I've played a couple book trailers on this channel already. We're not going to have any of those on there. But um, you can see them in my, I believe I did it in Sweet Evil, The Commandment, and Save the Pearls, all had book trailers which were amazing and bizarre and some of my favorite things. And we are going to watch the Sweet Evil trailer because that is my favorite thing. Um, Sweet Evil is the one where she explodes. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Um, wait, no, not the one where she explodes. Oh, wait, where does Fallen, she explode? Fallen is the one about the woman who explodes. No! On a book trailer, that's the movie, because that one had a movie. Oh, Fallen right, yeah. doesn't really have a book trailer officially, which mm. is pretty surprising. Um, no, Sweet Evil is the one where the angels ascend from heaven when she first has sex for the first time, and her angel mother applauds her for that the first time she has sex. I love Sweet Evil. It's the most trashy and the worst. It's not the worst, but like it's inoffensively the worst because it's so offensive. It goes into pure parody. It's very much the um. Oh no, Sweet Evil's Jake Thorne, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. No, no, oh. God, no! It's Halo. <laughs> Halo. Halo is Jake Thorne. Halo is Jake Thorne. Sweet Evil is the one with the British one who has a band. Um, he's British. He's, his name is like Caden or something, and he's always like love, and arse and things like that. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh God. I. I know these books really well, and I'm not proving that right now by getting a bunch of details wrong, but they do kind of cross over in a confusing way, okay? <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're gonna start with Silence, um, and we're gonna watch Finale's trailer. Silence and Finale are from Hush Hush, which is the most recent, like, big video I did. Hush Hush is actually my most hated um, YA bad angel book from the 2010s era <sighs> book series. And it has some of the most incredible trailers. And we haven't watched the first couple seconds of this like eight times. We definitely have not because my technical prowess is mm. perfect and we it haven't was seen great. it. It was fine. So I'm going to awkwardly grab have, us to the corner now. I have passing familiarity with Hush Hush, my school, my secondary school you don't librarian. Watch my my secondary school librarian used to read, used to select books to read at break times, and Hush Hush was one of the books she read for about four weeks. I know the story, but that's so bad. I know. Especially considering, like, the first scenes of Hush Hush I know. completely involve, like, Patch making a bunch yeah. of really harassing. Yeah. That's yeah. why I know them. I will say the other thing with book trailers is they're still being made. A lot of people have left comments that their English teachers would show them book trailers as like something Ooh. to encourage teens to read, to try and get more excitement. And I can't imagine that considering what we're about to watch. So let me just get you silence going. Mm. Okay. Um, we definitely haven't heard it 800 times. I, I love this so he much. He will do anything. He will do anything. <laughs> Protect her. Her? 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 Um, uh, we're going to be pausing it for the sake of things like copyright. She's copping a feel there. I <laughs> I love how much of his... um. <laughs> uh, just how much no, is really showing on the um, show. I'm not going to say the words here but a certain thing there that's really showing that guy has like solid like C cups at that angle at that angle um, you so, know he would always be doing like the Marvel um, a chest and he I might suppose. be he might be yes. oh hell yeah <laughs> what the even shit? remove her memories Whoa. I <laughs> 
Wow. I love how graphic absolutely... design is my passion. Oh no, this is not the worst graphic design we're gonna see by far. But it's bad though. I... Oh, it's so bad. I love I love the um also, he'd do anything to protect her, even remove her memories. He'd do anything to protect her, even violate her <laughs> bodily autonomy. Oh, anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, there goes that feather. Of, of him. him! Sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. that's better. Sorry. That's better. Of him. Of, of him. him. To be fair, she's probably better off that way. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, and then we see the cover. Do they which... even go to the ocean in the book? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to speak through the metal scream there. I I I haven't seen these in a while. I assembled this list ages ago. Um, I forgot about the black metal, just like ah, <laughs> <laughs> that plays on the on silence, which is the most boring and the worst book in. Oh, that's... they're all so bad. Silence is the one where he's it's... got Gatorade blood. No, that's book four. That's book yeah, four. Yeah, book four. No, oh my book God. three, like, nothing happens because he removes oh, yeah. all of her memories oh, yeah, and they go, to, they go to square one. Yeah. So it's just book one all over again, basically. It's the least interesting plot line. And here's a cool epic metal scream. But do they even go to a beach? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I mean, pretty much the full photo shoots for the series are, like, being carried around on beaches and things like that. Devin on the beach! Do, 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 do. Devin on the beach! Do, do, do. Really, no heavy beach action in these books, which is quite weird because honestly, that is kind of a staple of these things. It's not breathtaking. Mm. I don't think there's anything else in this trailer. Yeah, so then we have just mm. logos and things. Uh. Hush However, if you thought that that one was beautiful. Oh no! <laughs> So this is the trailer for Finale. Is and, she apple dunking or getting dunked? Uh, I don't know. I think he's having an epic teen party of some sort. So Finale's the one with Gatorade blood. Yeah. Um, having now read this after I watched the trailer for it, I'm really excited to see if I'm going to see any iconic scenes. Um, I'd really like the guy who goes, I am Devilcraft. Before he then, he explodes I like am, a blueberry. I am the I have become the Devilcraft. I have the monster <laughs> You've energy done drink. It. You've done it, Horus Heresy. You are the 40k. You've um, done it, Mr. Well, oh god, his name is Dante. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it, Mr. Dante. Hush, hush. You are the devil craft. <laughs> um, so, finale, though. So, last one is a lot of book trailers do that. They're not the most interesting, where they're just some stock footage, some text, and things like that. My favorite are where there's actual actors involved. And, um... They appear to have gotten some teens. This, I think, and is by stock teens, footage. I mean young people. This is stock footage, I think. But we are going to see Patch in his true cinematic glory. People have been waiting for this thing here. And oh my god, is it one of the best reveals? Okay. Is it that guy in his shorts? Excuse oh, me. Oh, no, wait. What's going on? This is fully acted. You just haven't been yourself recently. Cara Dobbin. <laughs> You haven't been yourself recently. You've been partying. You've been apple dunking. Almost all of the plot of apple bobbing. Fuck. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> all of Hush Hush is a series of her going to a series of parties, and then something happens, and then she leaves. There is so much teen partying in these books. She doesn't go to school. Mm. She's like failing in book four pretty much because she's missing school all the time, and it's not addressed or ever. Like it's just like one scene, and that's like, all right, time to devil craft. Anyways, I forgot that the whole thing is acted. I'm delighted. Seem distracted in class. Hello. Have you been getting enough exercise? <laughs> <laughs> that <Damn. laughs> Just think your studies should be your top priority. What do you have to say? What's up, Chase? Oh, sorry, did one sec. No, no. I thought I just saw a certain friend of mine, Jason. Jason? There's oh, a Jason. guy goddamn jumped from the roof with the... <laughs> it's not, That's not Jason, unfortunately, but I can see the resemblance. No, it's Jason's cousin. <laughs> Joe Joseph. Joseph. Look at this. Oh. I'm an angel. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> oh, you really gotta. I'm really. This, is, this isn't a scene in the book or anything. I'm really worried about you and your academic, you know, things. I'm no angel. <laughs> Okay, Damn. wait, okay, okay. Pat, you're, you're still failing math, though. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. She's gonna go and it's never addressed. The okay. Oh, 
Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Put that boy away. <laughs> Take that boy back. Put that boy back where he belongs. <laughs> it's dirty, nasty party city wings. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, God. Look at his bad hair. Look at his hair. Oh, there. I mean, he looks like a fallen <laughs> angel, but in the sense that he's been dragged through a hedge backwards. <laughs> They oh. do look like leaves. They look, From it here, it like does sh- look like that could be a shrubbery for all it we know. It looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> I love the dubstep drop so much. They're really going through all of like we've had the uh, we've had the metal scream. Now we've got dubstep. It, it's it's the twenty tens. It's the twenty oh, ten. It's beautiful, and then we have some logos and things. Oh God! Okay. okay. So, well, which one's the thousandth floor? Have you told me about this one? I have not told you about this one, and I haven't read it. So. Oh great! So this is we're going in blind. I have seen these trailers. Well, you've seen it, but, but I'm going um, in blind. When it comes to a lot of the books, I don't know where I have a pretty long playlist. We're just going to have some fun, and I probably then will edit out ones that aren't so interesting if they aren't. Um, so. The Thousands Floor is a book that I haven't read yet. I've weirdly had it for many, many years now. I've had is it for it like in, seven years. Is it's, it in the pile? It is not in the building with okay, us. Okay, it's not. Um, <laughs> is he in the... And is this, this a thousand Are the Thousand floor Floors in, in the room with us? <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, mm. technically it is because I have the ebook. Um... <laughs> the Thousandth Floor is just a world of, like, it's a building in the future that has a thousand floors. I actually thought it sounded kind of interesting. I don't know if the book is any good or not. I will introduce you, because I know pretty much most of You'll these books. You'll introduce me to the Thousandth Floors. I'll introduce you to various books to as very, we introduce uh... them. <laughs> I haven't read a lot of them. I do know reputations of some of them. This one, I have no idea if it's good or not, and I have no idea if I'll ever read it. It just lives in my ebook collection, you know? But please. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. I think that I I saved this one because this is pretty much like an esports introduction. Yeah. (laughs) No, there's a there's a video game I really like called Remember Me. That it's like it has a lot of this kind of like orchestral and also techno music, and I like this is dubstep. But this is weird. Um, Um, this is very much. I think she's about to start streaming. Um, you know, she's gonna hit up the Fortnite, yeah, she's getting she's, her stream ready to go. This epi- epic gamer intro. I, this is, I think, the only reason I saved is because... Or possibly an advert for a nightclub. It, it really is, like... The higher you are! <laughs> the further you fall, oh, okay. Yes. There's nothing strictly wrong with it, but it's really funny to me how much dubstep there is in here because the thing with book trailers is that it is just companies trying to figure out what teens think is cool to get them to buy books. What do teens think are cool? Do they think buildings are cool? Do they like dubstep? Do Do they they like like... stock footage of fast zooming things with dubstep in the- Do they like graphic design? Do they like default graphic design from Windows (laughs) Movie Maker? (laughs) Uh, there's there's nothing else to the trailer here. It's Subscribe! Just, it's just really funny. Okay. Everless is like a YA book series. Again, have not read this one. Um, it's something like... I think it's one of those things where it's like time is literally magic in the blood or whatever. So the immortals... I hope that they're drinking the blood of people to get more time out of them. Doesn't matter to me. Mm. But that's your introduction to this in one. In the end of Sempira, a rich control everything. Even time. Days and years are bled from our veins and turned into coins that they greedily devour. Okay. They eat in the coins? They're eating the coins. Why not just drink the blood? I mean, at this point, at this point, if you're gonna drink... Okay, so we're draining blood and we're, we're turning draining, into coins and yeah. then we're just like chocolate coins, we're just biting that stuff? Chocolate coins? Are we just biting that you stuff? Eat, you eating money? I, I love the narrator voice for a YA book trail. This is like our first one with yeah. a narrator in it, but I love the style of like... A girl with vocal fry. It, it is that, but also... I have vocal fry and I speak like this and She I'm doesn't not like have that girls. much vocal fry, but she definitely does a like... She could. <laughs> in the world of this place, in this place of the world, there are things that are different. Okay. <laughs> we perish. They live on for centuries. I love I once this. worked for a powerful family in Everless. The wealthiest did I escape long ago. The now, graphic design budget was high on this one. People I, love, mm. I must return to earn more time. I must return to earn more time. In my 
really like kind of gothic mansion in the desert. It's, it's nice. Well, it's it's hourglass. Oh yeah, yeah it's yeah. hourglass. No, it's nice. Hey, I'm not saying these are all bad, bad. trailers. I'm it's just great. saying that I think it's funny. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have to earn more time. The boy, I thought I'd never see again. The boy, I thought I'd never see again. The oh. time is a slippery thing, oh. and I feel myself spiraling down a dangerous path. I must uncover the secrets of my past before time runs out. This is the voice Go. that I put on when I'm reading a character in a book for like this channel, but mm -hmm. I'm making fun of her. <laughs> I need to return to get more time because you see, time is precious and time is in the blood. And I, I'm, my time is running out and I need to get more time and I need to earn more time. I'm go Something is going wrong with this voice, sorry. I uh. <laughs> anyways, anyways, Everless. I don't know, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I kind of dig the concept. I kind of dig, um, look, I'm not saying that uh, the concept Time is, is a prison, <laughs> she is the key. Okay. I, there's some things about it that goofy. sound a little bit goofy, but it does sound kind of cool. I think that I saved this one because that voice acting work really makes me laugh. Oh god. It okay. Is, uh, yeah. Okay. You've given oh. that one. You've given that voice to many. I have given wins. that voice and to when I'm mocking a, a woman. <laughs> when I'm mocking a woman. Crow call a misogyny <laughs> moments. When I'm mocking a woman, that's what I. That's what she sounds like. I don't know. I'm man. mocking you. <laughs> so uh, Red Queen. Oh, you I must, know. You it's... know Red Queen. I've read it. Oh, look I've at read you go. Parts of it. Um, Red Queen is another really famous one. To me, Red Queen and Throne of Glass were the exact same book for most of my life until I learned too much about Sarah Day Moss and now they are different. Um, this is a really famous one. In school, we learned about the world before ours, about the angels and gods that lived in the sky. You see what I mean about the voice acting in these trailers, huh? The angels and gods that lived in the sky. In school, we learned about these sorts of things. Also, I don't recall Mare going to like school very often. Um, I the graphic, the video design. Oh, oh. ruling the earth with kind and loving wow. hands. Wow, really went to the dollar store for that, Sensei, huh? I don't have much money, but I don't believe that. The gods oh. rule us still. They have come down from the stars, and they are no longer kind. Wow, you really did that much? Also, isn't like the entire point that she's supposed to be hiding her red blood, and that she's here? Well, just, this like, is this is the big the reveal. This is look, yeah. The budget for these, as you will realize, because we haven't got to one of my favorite tropes in these trailers, which is people in costumes running around a field, <laughs> just like someone's backyard, which is a really big thing in book trailers. The budgets are, to say the least, minimal. Mm. So they could only afford the one actress and her cheap little crown, and then they have then a they bunch have of sat in the chair. And then you do like the vine boom sound effect as it goes Doom! And they could afford <laughs> one small Halloween packet of fake blood. Look, the, the, the budget's not there, okay? The publishing industry spends so much money, but they don't spend it on, on these. They don't spend it well. And yeah, that's just the um the name Ooh, Red, Red Queen. Queen. And then we have like a little spinny thing and I, some I stuff. I didn't hate Red Queen, but I didn't find it interesting enough to continue. It doesn't interest me at all. Mm. It, it sounds generic. I, I had fun with it while I was reading it because I was like, ooh, fun magic cast system. That's I mean, kind of yeah, no, you, you could have with. fun with that. And then the I was thing like, is oh. with most bad books and with most books, because again, I'm not saying all these books are bad. I haven't read a lot of them. Mm. Um, though Divergent, I'm going to say, is bad without reading it. Um, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to books like this, it isn't necessarily that the concepts are completely, like, bad. There's always so much fun to be had in most things that even a bunch of things I've read, I've always liked looking at a bad book and thinking how I would improve it or like what should be changed or oh, yeah. even if it can't be fixed, what you could do is a small change to make it better or like one detail that's kind of cool. There's a lot in there. Like imagine if having like just like the the the, di the time and time again gone through love story. You had like a book that said something. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Okay, Divergent. Um, uh, this is something perfected. that I like to say about Divergent a lot, which mm. is, um, as you probably know, I hope, we divergent, divergent. Divergent. We're neurodivergent. Mm. You're gonna out yourself like that, huh? I think it's obvious. You like Warhammer, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Divergent um, had a movie franchise, which yes. I, I've i been corrected about the fact that there are people who were super fans of Divergent, but to me it always sounded like this name brand thing that nobody cared about. Like, it was like Hunger Games 2, and they would hype it up, but just mm. nobody was reading Divergent that I knew. Nobody cared about Divergent. I know that no. that's not strictly true, but also it's pretty much true. And it's very exemplified in the fact that there was a movie franchise. Mm. And like most movies at the time, they split the last book into two movies. Um, because we were all doing that for like two years and it was a mistake. Yeah. And with Divergent, book three is called Allegiant. And they named the third movie Allegiant. And then there was going to be a fourth movie called Ascendant. However, no one saw Allegiant. No one cared about Divergent. They never made part two. So as it stands, there was talk about doing like a, the movie as like a direct on TV movie, like a TV budget movie, or even doing a series, but just nobody cares about Divergent. No one gives a damn. So I love the fact that there is a YA series that wasn't a failed start. It was a pretty successful like first movie, second movie, but then by the third one, it just and then died had out. It slow and juddering. They could have had it all. They could have mm. just done one third book movie. All. And no. Mm. Anyways, Divergent. Ooh. Oh, oh. Chicago. it's in Chicago? That's the big twist at the end. Oh. Actually, I feel like that's a twist in, like, book three, but they are giving it up right here. Yeah, this is just... It's just... <laughs> it's just here. <laughs> They're in Chicago. Oh, look, I love the graphics. I love it. It's dirty and looks pretty bad. Oh, Beatrice. Yeah. I, I love that you don't seem familiar with Diversion. No, God, no. <laughs> Unless she choose life with her family. Whoa! See, the budget oh, yeah. really wasn't there. Or will her decision surprise everyone? I wonder. Word a YA book. I wonder. Including herself. Because this one was the one with, like, like the three kind of... I think there's, like, five... Five kind of, like, Personality books. types. Yeah. But except... she's, like, got, like, two traits, which makes her special. Yeah. It... you know, we as people only have one personality trait. I, I like that, you know, you're giving the critique everyone's been given since 2013, but it's true. Because the reason Divergent is nothing to me is because there isn't even, like, a clear caste system or anything that she's being... It's like, you grow up with your family, and when you turn 16, you, like, put a rock in a bowl, and it's like, I'm gonna join Dauntless, and Dauntless just, like, jumps off of trains. Yeah. They don't have just, a job or anything. It's, but wasn't Divergent also the one where they, like, made you face your fears? Yeah, there was a lot of going into a brain matrix to fight, like, fears and things. Yeah. It just wasn't interesting in at all to me. a tank of water? I remember that from a trailer but I don't know, point. probably. I think that was one of her fears, was a tank of water. It, it's a really boring concept. I'm scared of tanks of water. <laughs> I, w I would be pretty scared of those, yeah. I mean... Anyways, Divergent, I think this one I here mean... stands out to me for its just really dirty chrome yeah. dedication. It does you know give... what this reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, Doctor Who title cards. Yeah, you know, from the era, the way that the things just sort of spin and are in, like, little portals. Yeah. This looks eerily like when they were doing Mortal Engines <laughs> movie designs and they designed all of the guild symbols. Mm. They were pretty much like this, I think. Yeah. What, what do we got next? Ruins. Hello? Fallout. Right. I know nothing about this. Oh. Um, it's vaguely familiar to me. When I listened to the trailer, I was like, I vaguely have heard of this book. I'm really fond of this one because it is a future Super Bowl commercial. I love it that we're getting an in-universe in the far future or whatever. This is a Super Bowl commercial that aired on TV. In fiction, what okay? What number is that? You know numerals. You did Latin. <laughs> <laughs> X is 10. I think C is 50. I think C is 50. I don't know. It's a number, all right, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it might be 61. Oh, I'm going to be so wrong about that. Okay. They're going to call you out in the comments. Please, please. Let's just watch the Super Bowl commercial. Paragen. Stream date. They got streaming in the future? First of all, record annotation one. Super Bowl denotes annual sporting competition to establish National Football League Championship. Damn, I'm glad we're getting that um, information. Mass, Mass viewership, viewership yielded premium commercial sponsorships. Commercial rate in 2065, 28 million. Oh, you were right. 2065. It's a BB60s, wasn't it? 
I miss. I did. I, I said sixty-one, I mean, but I was pretty close. You were cl- pretty close. I was pretty. Well, actually, wait. The Super wait, Bowl isn't set to a one-one. No, it's not. No, we. What was? The why are we trying to tell why? anything about Super Bowl? <laughs> why are we doing? Why would this? we do that, anyways? I'm really fond of a book trailer that first starts by giving you some very boring annotations about what the Super Bowl is because mm. we need this. Like in universe, it's kind of a nice setup for like this is past the Super Bowl. Escalating partial attacks in what? 2065. Here at Perigee, we consider ourselves animators, but we're Americans. Oh god, there's men in here. No, in there's the the There's stock footage men. We committed oh. to a single goal. Oh. Strengthening our core business to reclaim the standard of living for all American humans that was enjoyed before the isolation war. Today, we're funding more renewal efforts than any other company and developing proprietary technology for President Cregan's human partial... President Cregan. <laughs> President Cregan. <laughs> President Cregan. This is my... Um... President Colonel Cregan. <laughs> yeah, this is my this is my OC based on Reagan. Cregan. Mm-hmm. Cregan. Um, I love, the, holding, I love holding this credit card full of DNA. <laughs> I, I, um, I have to say, by the way, as a concept... So I really extremely like extremely poisonous and had as hazardous. <laughs> it, yes, of course. The card is very, very radioactive. Um, what I really like is that just says like initiate scan. This is analyze initiate scan. I, I don't know. It's it's some edited stock footage. Maybe I do genuinely really like the concept of doing an in universe like a corporate ad. Yeah, yeah, which is really a fun concept. But I do find it a little silly that this was apparently a Super Bowl ad. But that's not all. Where's all the like the weird if jokes? If you want to see what Perigen has planned next, just look up. Oh. Just look up. Dandruff. I see this actually as trailers go, it makes me <laughs> I mean, as trailers go, it makes me want to know what they're doing to the sky. Yeah. I believe that this is a book about here, I'll um Oh, it was never streamed. Oh, they never got to see it. Oh, oh. they terminated it. They okay, killed it. Cool. They took it out back and shot it. I do like, uh, are you going to show me the book cover? No, okay. Nope. Um, partials or Ruins or whatever the heck. I think it's the partial series and the book was called Ruins. It's something about like aliens mutating a bunch of people on Earth. Mm. I do like this trailer. I think I'm mostly showing it to you because I think it's kind of funny to do a generic corporate parody for your book trailer. Yes. That also doesn't really tell you anything about the book at all. I mean, it kind of slaps. It kind of slaps those. I'm like, ooh, what could it be? This is like yeah. um, SCP I mean, found horror. Yeah. Like, you know. I mean, like it's a, it's that's like a marketing, um, an advertisement like scheme. Like you just like like put up logos or whatever but you don't give anybody any kind of information about it other than yeah like and names. then it's like ooh, what what, like, what ooh, are they doing what are they doing i think that we're, we're we're saying this was a good one i just think it's kind of 10 fun. out of 10 we haven't been racing any of these no no and we won't no 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 <laughs> this is the space one why am i telling you things that are going to be obvious in about two seconds i love anything with real actors though i will say that oh, reverie Every day is perfect. perfect. Oh, oh. Oh. Hello, madam. I love God. I God, love 2007 it. called. <laughs> Look at her glossy little orbs. But actually, she's wearing. Um, I would call that one of those gel pads you put yeah, on your <laughs> eyes <laughs> to no, like, remove redness. No, a gel pad for your foot. Oh, right, yeah, of course. It looks exactly like a gel mm. insult. Yeah. It's. And, oh yeah, of course she's wearing the sci-fi turtleneck. She does look like, I believe... Okay, I'm face blind, so I can't say this. The Theranos lady? Oh, Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> yes. But I'm face blind, so I can't say that, because she definitely doesn't look like that. No, what am I talking Elizabeth about? Elizabeth Holmes is blonde. Uh, Hello? Hello? <laughs> I love it. I love it. This it brings me so much joy. Like how I love like a Neil Breen movie. I love like like the CGI and graphic design of these things. I what? love uh, all of these backgrounds. Sir? Who's he? Are they in an airport terminal? I think they're in an airport terminal. <laughs> Banished <laughs> for oh no, creating a forest fire <laughs> in your mind. She's been banished to that um th- that desert where all those two thousands mu- music videos are oh, made. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> gotta watch out. Except it's it's night in this Look case. Look out, girl! <laughs> Earth, wind, and fire about to come through. <laughs> gotta watch out. Kesha's gonna be coming for you. 
Oh, oh shit. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, I, yeah. I, at this point in the video. Yeah, it's fine. It's been like five minutes. Also, t it's probably been 18 minutes. I don't know. 20 minutes. I don't care. Stay Hello? <laughs> what does that mean? I mean she walked through the forest for five minutes. Some guy rugby tackles you. I've lost everything because of you. I don't Sir? Even know you. Who are you? I this is this is my our first example of some people running in fields, which yeah. is my favorite subgenre of book trailers. What a wonderful meet cute. Me, <laughs> what do you want from me, you savage? I've heard stories that you're murderers and deceased cannibals. What do you want from me, you savage? Is that what you heard about us? You're diseased savages. I don't know whatever she said. Never yeah, meant to trust. Uh, Never meant to. Know about Maria. He hasn't told me anything. When he lost Helen, he lost himself. Oh. He hasn't been the same ever since. Good to know. Oh! <laughs> Almost everything about you comes to Sky. Well, I think there are some diseased cannibals, actually. Um, <laughs> How dare you say that about the Dark Brotherhood? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like the guys who are just standing around in cloaks, but in, also in like the guys who are dressed as like cavemen, going like, mm -hmm, "Where's Boogie?" I, I think that th this is the woods from uh, Neil Breen's uh, <laughs> the Faithful, Faithful the Findings. Faith no, not Faithful Findings. It's the pair one where those twins. Is that Faithful Findings? No, they, they go into the woods in Faithful. Oh no, no, no Twisted no. Pair Twisted has the, pair. Has the purple forest. Yes, this is this is just over to the side of the Twisted fo the purple also, forest. It doesn't look like they're in the forest. No, of course not. That's like that's not a photo. Into the forest. That's not. That's like a draw. That's, that's yeah, art. Yeah, that's like a watercolor. <laughs> Oh, oh well. they gotta run through the woods. Oh no. That guy has a hat on. Oh! <laughs> Hello? <laughs> One million. Oh, I wish I was running through the woods with my best bros. <laughs> One million to die ways to die in the west? <laughs> to die. Oh! <laughs> child? <laughs> this child exploded. Oh, this trailer keeps giving. What's this? <laughs> there he goes. Oh, I... This one had a budget, but um, I'm not sure they spent it right. I have a fair idea of what I wanted right now. I have a fair idea of what I want right now. You. No. You. No. You closer. Oh. You closer. Oh, get over yourselves. Jesus wept. I mean, you've got like an apocalypse to worry about. I don't know what's going on. They're in space. She gets abandoned to a planet. They're making Isn't out. This the plot of the One Hundred. Uh, yeah, probably exactly. Like, one million ways to die. One way to live. Who gives a damn? <laughs> um, Incredibly original, however. Epic. Mesmerizing, mesmerizing. Captivating. Evocative. Unforgettable. Evocative. Evocative is. A weird word because I don't really think that it's what necessarily it positive. Oh. <laughs> so City of Fallen Angels. I don't know. A Cassandra Clare. Um, before the last like five years when I really became somebody who really hates Sarah J. Moss, Cassandra Clare was my next, like my top. I used to say I had a, a blood rivalry with her. I feel like it does go into blood. Um, we are active Cassandra I, Clare haters, unfortunately. Cassandra Clare well, is, um, if, if you don't know, I don't know how you can't get away with not knowing about Cassandra Clare in this day and age. Um, first of all, she was active in the Harry Potter fandom for a really long time. I'm going to just give a short summary about oh, yeah, why of course, I have beef yeah. with her. Um... Cassandra Clare was active in like the Harry Potter fandom back in the day and she specifically was what like a big name fan which was before we really had social media yeah but we would have like fandoms were smaller groups usually rather than spread between like 18 million websites so there would just be this thing of big name fans very important people who would have often like cult yeah. followings and Cassandra Clare was some of like the most known and um some of her most infamous acts being she once tried to get a girl kicked out of college straight up for being mean to her on the internet she like called this one girl's like school mm. and like i think reported that she cheated on something she tried to get her kicked out of school because she was upset about harry potter things on the internet which 
you know, now like 10, 20 years later, we've kind of come full circle to that, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there are people doing things. She's done a lot of bullying, basically. She was really an unpleasant, toxic person. Um, and then when it comes to her actual books, uh, here's some more fun facts. Uh, she's been accused of plagiarism. She did a lot of plagiarism in her fan fiction, but also her books have some things of plagiarism in them. Her actual Mortal Instruments series is based off of a Harry Potter fan fiction. It is specifically... Um, One of her, like, Ron Ginny fanfics. It, it is based off slightly a Ron Ginny fanfic, because she was a heavy shipper of that. Um, most specifically, the name Mortal Instruments, her whole series name, was based off of a Ron Ginny fanfic. Um, so that's sort of the level of... That just says so much to me. Uh, in addition, I really don't like her because my favorite book series of all time is the Mortal Engines Quartet, which is amazing. And Mortal Engines is very similar to Mortal Instruments. Okay, that's one thing. Then she has a prequel series called the Infernal Devices, and book three of the Mortal Engines series so is, is, called is called Infernal, Infernal Devices. Devices. I literally just turned around to look at it on the yes. bookshelf. Yes, and in addition to that, um, she has a villain in that series. Um, so the main villain of the first, like, book or series or whatever is a guy called Valentine. Ah! Um, which you know Mortal Engines. So, uh, in Mortal Engines, the main villain is pretty much, uh, in the first book, a man called Valentine, who turns out in a twist reveal to be the father of the main red-haired protagonist. And that is exactly what happens in Mortal, like, City of Bones, Mortal Instruments. Red-haired protagonist, twist father thing, named Valentine. Mm. It's really quite weird. And also, for some reason, in the movie-wise, actor, like, Sheehan or whatever, he plays Tom. Mm. And he also played, like, the one of the boys in the original Mortal en Instruments movie. So... There's just this weird connection there that is never acknowledged, but because I have such a personal love for Mortal Engines, it has fueled a lot. Anyways. Cassandra Clare, Cassandra Clare haters, Mortal Engines mm. lovers. Yes. Uh, City of Fallen Angels is like book five or something. There's yeah. quite a number of trailers. This was I, the one I, I picked. I get confused about the, the Cassandra Clare series. Is I will go into this. There's so many of them. Yeah. Uh, there's so many, but just... Okay, which brother are you kissing now? I don't know. Some of the worst looking vampire fangs of- Oh my god, hello! Oh, we're going in her mouth. I do like the slap. Um, oh, wow. Why is everybody <laughs> grotty? No, go back. Go back. I want to see the, the group again because they all the look group just shot slightly, was beautiful. slightly grotty. I would really like to. This man's vampire teeth on the left, they don't they, fit in his he's, mouth. Um, he's clearly uncomfortable. He looks like he's eating a bee. Um, I remember well, he's seeing- got his, He's got his molars <laughs> removed. He's got that cotton in his mouth. Oh god, yeah, that's me after I have my wisdom teeth pulled out. <laughs> I wish these guys were playing in that show. Um, you gotta respect that this does look a lot like my our friend Emma. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's, I shouldn't say that about her. But you can't say that uh, about a look long haired goth women, long haired goth dark, woman. dark women. I should I shouldn't be doing that. I should be respecting them. It's not their fault. It's not anyone's Listen, fault. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Uh, I love that his, man's got stuff the bags on his head. for days. This music is so grotty. Ooh, I hate that graphic design. She wasn't even red-haired in the book trailer. She... No, I mean, I think Which she... one no, was no, she no, meant she's to be? The girl on the left. She's that one. On the right, Then I why think. are we given so much focus on girly they're, left? The left They're hand equally girly. there. Just one of them is like... I know, but we see her, like, several times earlier in the trailer. I don't know. Maybe she gets, like, a goth upgrade or whatever. Well, no, there's this woman, this and then woman. there's a different red-haired... I don't know who any of these people are, okay? Well, and I don't... Through. I don't care to find out who any of them are. Neither do I. Serpent and Dove. Um, this is this where one. I was saying um, I've been... alarmingly recent. This yeah, came out I've in like 2018 this... yeah, or I've something. I've seen the cover for this one. Um, yeah, it's. I actually don't like the covers for this series very much because it's very similar to the Light Lark cover to me, where, where it's, it's a bunch like of overly photoshopped, processed, <laughs> shiny things. A bunch of objects on a when page. When you just look at it, it's like, ooh, shiny and cool. And then you look at it a little bit deeper and you're like, oh, that's just a bunch of shiny shit on the page. It, it doesn't quite work for me. Um, Serpent and Dove is alarmingly recent, and it had like three or four different trailers of a surprisingly high budget. So they kind of were really investing in it, and it did pay off because it's a very successful book. It's not good, is the reputation. Well, they got 20 seconds, so... This is only 20 seconds, but here, check it out. This is alarmingly high quality for a recent, like, the book trailers. 
It's still pretty funny to me, though. Me, when I've been taken by my gothic madness. She does look like she's, like, 30. No no offense to her, but oh. I, she's meant to be, like, a teenager. She's got, like, the one ring. Turns her invisible. Oh, is oh. that the full trailer? <laughs> That's not the trailer I meant to pick. I vague, I remember there being, like, 80 women or something. I'm sorry, there weren't that that's, many- That's one woman. I'm sorry. I'm so that's sorry it. that I didn't give you 80 women. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the trailer I thought it was. I think I I don't know why I picked that one. Maybe just because it's a 20 seconds still where they've paid a woman to look dramatically and put on a ring. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, this Things is another extremely recent book, which looks, again, kind of cool. But uh, no, they're still making book trailers. I mean, I love a snake. So. I do love a real snake. Like, this one I think looks cool. I was just like, it's still going on. Is this the one where I also don't like the book trailer? No, not the book trailer, the book cover. Oh! Cool, cool eyes. Madam. I... Now she must fight. I, to I save kind... them all. Oh! Mm, those magic effects. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> when we stand two feet away from each other. <laughs> and, and, then <laughs> and then I started blasting. And then I started blasting. Mm. Um... No, I think I did pick this one because of the wonderful... F I wish that there was a full movie... I, it, I wish that YA book movies were made with only the budget of these trailers, and it was just a bunch of people running in a field to some dramatic music. I'd love it if text would flash on the screen the entire movie. I think that would be quite innovative <laughs> and fun. If just, just every so often various it was like, taglines. <laughs> just like every 20 minutes you'd have a tagline pop up. Now she must save. Yeah. <laughs> right before she gets, she gets a quest of like, you need to save the kingdom. And then it just goes, now she will have to save the kingdom. And then it just continues for like 20 minutes until the next it's thing happens. It's just a guy who's like, I love you. And it's like, I oh, want your love. <laughs> uh. It would be actually very fun. <laughs> oh. oh. Nice. Actually. Kind of pops. No, no. I'm, you know, again, I'm not saying any of these books are bad. I'm just saying I really enjoy their things. Before I fall. This had a movie of it. Um, I haven't listened to this with audio. I literally was compiling this list and I found this today. Mm. And without audio, it was really funny to me. So I'm hoping it will hold up. We'll, su we'll supply yeah. our own audio. I mean, no, I mean, there might be audio. I just haven't listened to it before. Oh, oh. Day, oh. Just another day. yes. I'm glad. Are you vlogging? <laughs> I just... I love this one, Even I think, because it looks really bad. It doesn't look- she, she's not in the classroom. It's not even it's just the- she's probably in the classroom, we're literally seeing her entire day. I know, but she looks weird around the edges. I- it it's might be because this is in like 200p like pixels per inch. Mm. Oh, oh, there she goes! I had a great time at the party. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I- I was just watching this without any knowledge that there was narration, and it is really funny without narration because I think that if you put like a good like kind of upbeat silly tune to it of just an extremely blurry woman just play going some through sax. an extremely blurry woman going through her very blurry day, and then she <laughs> makes that face, which I shouldn't I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> she's she's dying, Xander. She's dying in that one. This is a book about I think a woman. Me when I die. see. <laughs> <laughs> when I see the ogre. <laughs> <laughs> Me when I see the skull. Yeah. <laughs> I. There she goes. There she goes. There she goes. She... Oh, and oh, and now she's going back. Really get some Is she reliving? Honestly, I know that she like dies on this day. I think that that's what the book is about. Did you change anything? <laughs> oh, hi. I'm sorry to laugh. I think I went to high school with that man. This is just yeah, that's just yeah. what everybody in my high school looked like. <laughs> well, no, we've all, we've all seen that guy. About half of the I've, we've all seen this pencil sharpener. That's a really I haven't. Okay, that's an intimately familiar pencil sharpener to me. For you, for you Americans. Yes. Yeah. For no. The, for the English crowd, I'm and here this, to say this... I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> I've I've this boy. At least not attached to a wall. This... It's of course attached to a wall. You know. That you have to stand to up wall. and walk to the side of the room to sharpen your pencil. Where did you guys sharpen your pencils in school? At our desks. With what? Pencil sharpeners, small ones. You had to buy your own? No. Just, where, where did they come from? The school. 
The school gave you pencil sharpeners? Well, they would be on the table. I don't. We, we used to have pencil <laughs> pots that would have stationery in them. Wait, just like default? Like you'd walk in and there'd just be like pencils well, I'm thinking for you? about primary school specifically, but in this secondary is, this school. This is really thrilling. Secondary school, this we is, had to bring our own pencil This sharpeners. is really thrilling. I can think of no more thrilling concept than discussing pencil sharpeners, huh? Yeah, well, secondary school, you had to bring your own pencil yeah, sharpener. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we should just stop and have like a 10 minute discussion about pencils and pencil sharpeners now. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> you can't say that about my mother. Sorry. <laughs> you apologize to Nicola. <laughs> I also went to school with these people. I do have yeah. to respect the um the, the trailer world for because they have no budget, they just had to use real teenagers a lot of the time. And they actually look like regular people. I don't think there's anything that much interesting in this. I just really like how girl, blurry she is. Girl, you could just not go to the party. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Who? Yes. I don't know. I just like how blurry she, everything is. That's all. I don't know anything about the book. You'll have no choice but to no. tear through this book. Oh! <laughs> the champion is here. I had to. I'm. I had to cut this out of my um, original review for it. I had. I kept like the first bit of seconds, but there's copyright music in this. Mm, we'll go, we'll, we'll just see about this about, one. We'll just um, talk over it. We'll talk over it and pause a lot. This is one of the reasons that I keep being annoying and pausing all the time. By the way, thank you, viewers. Um, sweet evil. Sweevil. I love Sweet Evil so much. Um, it's so bad, and this trailer lives- I'm gonna play it like eight times, so enjoy. My name is Anna. 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 Mm. Name is Anna. <laughs> I used to be a good girl. I used to be a good girl. I used to be a good girl. <laughs> My name is Anna, and I used to be a good girl. And now I vote for Trump. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say that about <laughs> Anna. She I'm would, though. A guardian angel and a fallen I'm the daughter of a guardian angel and a fallen. I'm gonna. I. I'm so bad at doing any sort of accent. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm a daughter of a guardian angel. I'm a daughter. And a fallen one. I'm a daughter. I'm the daughter of a fallen angel and a guardian angel and all sorts of things like that. Mom, I'm so sorry, people. Tipped another to sin. Depends on the oh, I remember which one Sweet Evil is now. I mean, it's very Christian. Caden. Caden. It's the one where you can smell her virginity. Yes. Yep, Caden can't smell. Well, he never confesses well, the no, smelling the her virginity. Can. Caden is in an international sex trafficking ring. Oh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> How can you forget about How could I forget about the. Um... Him, him, in his international sex trafficking ring that he participates in. And he only feels guilt for- I'm gonna talk like people haven't seen these books' reviews. You really should check that one out, because it's one of my favorite sets of reviews. Hey, it's bad. Um, because Caden is in an international sex trafficking ring. Um, he is forced to do it by his father, but the book doesn't want to examine any of, like, the trauma of that or anything. It just sort of excuses everything he does. Oh. And he literally, in the first book, is like- oh my god. We're deep enough in the video that I can just say these things, uh, yeah. but I'm going to obscure certain things for the sake of not having to include trigger warnings on the book trailer video. Um, he is told by his father to do a participating act in this uh, crime ring, and um, he then said it to a 13-year-old, mm. and he says in the book, straight quote, like, I couldn't do it. You know, normally I wouldn't care or whatever. Oh yeah. But he, <laughs> oh, normally I wouldn't care about yeah, traumatizing you know, or whatever. these no, women. No, 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 no. But um, I kept thinking about how you would be upset with me, so I couldn't do it. And there's he never gains any empathy for like the victims, and he also. My favorite detail from the series and how bad it is, um, it's in the epilogue of the third book that they have like a sentence that just says, Caden, shut down that ring. <laughs> Even though for like all of I book to, two and three, he's I going take against- take my glasses off for this bullshit. Hold on, <laughs> let me put them back on. Even though for all of book two and three, um, he's working against his father in secret, at no point does he do anything to stop the sex ring. And in book two, when he's angry at Anna, he goes back to his dad and kind of just gets back to it. Like, st straight up. He is... I hate all of these young adult male protagonists, like, mm. love and trust. He might be the worst yeah. in terms of his actual real crimes. Well, Jake Thorne was a Nazi. Jake Thorne was a Nazi for a bit. Um, <laughs> for a bit. Yeah, you know, well, he did. He it spent was, a summer as a Nazi. He really did, though. That is, in book two, that's the reveal. I wish Halo had a trailer. That's another really Christian angel book, and the love it... Semi-love and trust. He's right, love rival. He's portrayed like he's meant to be a love and trust, but because it's a really, really Christian book, he can't actually for a second be a legitimate one. 
but also the main character of that one is very forgiving about him and he is a literal Nazi in that one. So that is fun. The kind of boy your daddy warned you about. The kind of boy you know. And no one warned me. The kind of boy your daddy warned warned you about. about. But no one warned me. (laughs) No one warned me. No one (laughs) one warned warned me. No one warned me. (laughs) Warned me. Warned me. me. No one warned me, because I ain't got a daddy. My daddy's a... Actually, the best character in the series, because he's just a silly little guy. He's, is he in prison? He's a demon who's a he's a demon who becomes a reformed Christian in jail. Also, I don't he like willingly got thrown in jail so he could then secretly become a Christian. Christian. And all of his coworkers, because they're just like eight other like arch devils, basically, are so they're so funny because they're really really funny. All of them. Because they're just these silly, exaggerated, like cartoon characters. Oh, the yeah, Arch Devils. Aren't they like they like the sins. They sin are all guys. different sins, except for some reason in that book she made instead of just like seven, one for each sin, she just made up some new ones. So he's the Duke of Substance Abuse. <laughs> um, and then there's also like the Duke of Hate the Duke and of the Duke, Duke of Wrath. And um, that's a big plot point. And, one of and the, the things, Duke of Hazard. The, one of the things that he does in this book, uh, book two, is that he makes his daughter like take like every single drug, so that she can build up extra resistance to doing all drugs. <laughs> that that's a plot point in the book. Sweet evil's insane. <sighs> I want to do is give in. Okay. <laughs> this is that copyrighted music that we hate so much. So give in to <laughs> sweet. You're into sexy. <laughs> You're into steamy. We're gonna tone it down. You're into sweet, sweet, sweet evil, evil. <laughs> Sweevil. 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 Anyways, I'm gonna hear one more time. My name is Anna. My name is Anna. Used to be a good girl. Used to be a good girl. My name is Anna, and I used to be. A... I'm so sorry for. I love southern accents. You guys have such lovely oh. accents. Um, oh. But no, I, it's a great <laughs> accent. It's just she. she it's that woman definitely jarring. doesn't have a real one. No, that is definitely a fake accent. That's I will tell you right now. That one on. There's no way that that's a real accent. That woman is it's definitely fake. It's very one. jarring to like go through because you would picture a lot of American young adult novels. They're always like from like they're not from the south. There's a weird divide where actually there's a number of them that are very specifically super southern and a number of them that are very specifically like, like the New York. The New Yorkers. Yeah, it's really quite weird. Um but no, there is actually a number of ones set in this like there's also beautiful creatures which is about oh, yeah, like true. witches and stuff. And that one's a very southern um one like that. They had their time. I don't really yeah. understand why, but for a bit it was really popular yeah. as just like a southern country YA Maybe romance a vibe. Girl. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Yee yee, as they say. Firelight. They say dragons don't exist. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, I have to turn the volume up. Fire. Okay. They say dragons don't exist. I know better. Okay. Yeah. They thought fire breathers were a thing of the past. I've proven them wrong. What, like the, the circus stunt? She needs, like, a pop filter on her voice. Um... <laughs> I wish that I had the charisma and the swag of a generic woman in a bad wig standing in front of a green screen as smoke flies by. <laughs> Can you imagine being one of these actresses just standing there neutrally, just waiting? I mean, I'm going to be very disappointed if she has, isn't the dragon. And now, I assume she is. Oh, Wait. Own you? The fire breathers. You shouldn't be together. Look at that. You shouldn't do a close-up of that wig. Without Look at that wig. I'll fade to nothing. If he discovers no secret. The sound mixing is really bad on this one. I'm so glad that it took me like three months to make this video and that I completely <laughs> forgot that she. <laughs> oh, look at her little smile. Oh, oh, sh- oh, oh. My- oh. Mm, I love, I love it. I love her bad wig so much, and I love just girl. You better not get your bad wig next to that. It's gonna, <laughs> it's catch, gonna fire. catch fire in seconds. <sighs> the audio mixing so bad you can barely hear. Her. But I'd risk everything to be with him. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Long. laughs> 
And I've got they've got some Skyrim music in the background there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess she's a dragon. Okay, she's a dragon. That's I mean I love good. dragons, you know, Even women keep um... winning. What's wrong with her lips? I, I don't want to body shame, but it does look like she's has like they've underlined foundation. Her lips. Are you sure? On the top here, it looks like there's foundation over the top of her lip. They've made her top lip smaller. Yeah, they have made her top lip smaller, right? Why? Like, I'm not imagining this. That's that's definitely... Um, her lip has been... Talon. Did you ever read Talon? No. The other one where she's a dragon? I know that she's a dragon in that one. I liked it. I, when I, read I mean, it, being a dragon's really cool. It kind of slaps. I kind I of mean, wish that she didn't fall in love with the human man. But Julie... She does. Um, I know I know the author's first Julie name is Julie. Julie K- 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 Begins with a K. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. I'm going to. I'm going to. It's not hard to pronounce, but it's just let's not try to say it without knowing what it is. <laughs> She's a, actually. It. I don't mind her as a writer because I've read her Iron. Kagawa. Yeah, that's you Kagawa. could you you could pronounce that one. Kagawa. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, she wrote the Iron Fay series, which mm. is a um oh, really. Yeah. It's a really fun. It's not anything groundbreaking, but it's actually a really fun like Fay book. Where she has a lot of fun with, like, fairies and things. Yeah. And fairies and folklore. And I've actually read, like, six books in that series straight up. So I I, she wrote those ones. And they're they're pretty fine. Like, you know, they're nothing revolutionary. But they're nice. So I, I respect her abilities. I don't know if it's an amazing book series. But I think that turning into a dragon's pretty metal. I thought it was fun because they're, like, dragon spies. Which is great. And I think that's a really fun concept. Yeah. Dragons um, are... And I wish she hadn't, like, fallen in love with, like... The human boy. I wish she. I wish been, like, I, you cool. know, when I read pretty much any book, I'm like, wow, I wish she hadn't fallen in love with that human boy. <laughs> that's that's how I go for anything. Oh, that music's really dramatic. Ooh, oh, we have another one. Dark Eden. I don't Did know how many Dark trailers. Eden? No, I've never heard of Dark Eden. I was trying to tra- keep track of which ones you have read. No, um, but hey, we were seven strangers on Broadway. Apparently, it, it is thing. reminding me of Broadway. Oh, on a in a minivan. on a very large minivan, frankly, that's Badly like five rows. In. No one could find us. Oh, oh yeah, because you're this in like is a creepy pasta. like an SMV, uh, SMV, SMV, FMV like video game. <laughs> She's returned. Oh yeah, creepy I respect elf her. Grandma, I love elf. <laughs> Did she have like pointy ears? Didn't she? Look at her ears. Are they pointy? Huh. No, I don't think Surely. so. They, they look pointy. They do, but I think she just has big ears. No, they're pointy. May I? I wish I could tell you for sure. Either I'm looking at like curls of her hair. It could be curls of her hair, or her it's ears pointed. Are pointy. I don't know. What I was gonna say is, I just really like this. Um, saw this... grandma with the flannel. <laughs> I do love saw grandma with the flannel. It does make me think of an FMV video game. She just goes <laughs> for revenge. Why? What did you do to this old woman? I I don't know. I is this Saw actually? Maybe this is Saw. Are we? Is that Fallout? This Outlast. So have we? <gasps> oh, drama. Oh, girl, your hair. Oh. <laughs> Who is he? Oh my God. I, it's a bunch of. It looks like a reality TV show set in a bunker. If Saw was a reality TV show, mm. that is the... Hello? There are two ways to enter Dark Eden. What, two different books? Oh. Experience the app. Is the app still around? I wonder. Of course not. I mean, maybe, but like, it can't be. I want to check. Oh! Atomic Underground by each chapter? Each chapter is 99 cents? Are you, are you checking? Dark Eden? There's no way it's around. No, that's a that's a mobile game. That's, yeah, it's gone. Sorry. Very sad. Um, Lost media. Oh yeah, of course. No, look at the layout of that like <laughs> <laughs> ancient phone. Uh, is this is this a video game? A, no, that's an iPod Touch. I is this a video game? Like, am am I gonna be like entering like ARG codes? <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's something. Oh no, it's a phone. Okay. I thought it looked, is, it looked like an iPod touch. Is this a paranormal book right now? I don't think she's a vampire. I know that it looked like she has pointy ears. The curls there are so paranormal fantasy, but everything about it does appear to be some sort of interactive saw. ARG saw game. Game. Uh, I don't know. Dark Eden. Are these different people? Quick Those question. Those are different people. Are yes. they both different people? Yes. Okay. 
One is a dark haired woman, one is a blonde I, woman. No, I know that, but people can dye their hair. I know. But no, they, oh, have, they okay. have different Fear faces. is the cure. Revenge is the cure. Is this a sickness plague? Is it one supernatural? Is who something seduction? Um or auction? Wood Wood Seduction. Wood seduction? Woods auction. Woods auction? Willow Willow Lake Willow Willow's auction. We need to get rid of the read the books. No, no, I don't I refuse. I'll look okay. at this later. Um that one's very mysterious because I've never heard of this book before in my life. Um, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Eve of Destruction. And Phantom File, The Origin of the Cure. I mean, that, is this maybe like that a is the plank? same man from the second book. Okay, well, he's a very special man. He's a very special man. He looks like, um, <laughs> what's his nuts? Uh, he's a Nathan CW. Fillion. Now, I know that I'm face blind, but that's not, that, wait, no, wait. I, I said looks like, not is. I don't know who Nathan Fillion is. You I don't. just remembered I got him confused. I'll by probably get roasted in the comments for saying he looks like Nathan Fillion, but. I got him confused with it's... Nathan for you, and I was like, that's not Nathan for you. I know that face. <laughs> Anyways. It's fine. Oh, Young Elites. Oh, this is another oh, I like beautiful. Marie Lou. Um, she did um, War Games. I read War Games. I've, I've read all of the Legend series, which is very weird. Um, in that one, the main character is like 15 and she has a love interest ish who is like 27. Uh, he's not really a love interest, but he's framed as one for like half of the book and then it turns out like plot. This has been years, so I'm remembering this very wrong. But he is framed a little bit as a love interest and he is like 27 years old. And then later, the like president of Antarctica is like a 21 year old boy who's also into her when she's like 17. Yeah, I mean, in the War Games book, she's like. How old is she in the War Games book? She is That's young, a pretty she's recent a young book. adult. She's like eighteen, yeah, and then the love interest is like a something-year-old CEO. He's like he's probably. 20s. I mean, yeah, they all are, aren't they? Um, but no, this is Young Elites, which I have read the first book for, and it was better than I expected. But um, it's probably the most edgy sounding series from the time. This is really the start, I feel, of when we had a lot of edge Some lord YA. Us. Dante, Spider. Some fear us. Lucent. Some Windwalker. Us. Enzo the Reaper! That's but Assassin's Creed. Rafa Fale. Oh, bugs. She's shadows. Because she's cool and edgy. I just really liked the um, budget superhero team that we get to see here. Yeah. Of... He's, he's holding a sword. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're cool. They're cool. Some worship us. Enzo. Ooh. But all know us. Rafa Fale. And then she just has her bug swarm bees. of darkness. Not bees. the bees. Not the bees. It's, um... And she's the white wolf. Oh she's like the the edgiest, edgiest woman. She... she. I can sell. Hmm. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. I thought it would uh, be way worse when I read it. This was years ago. I feel Geralt like of Rivera. pretty much every book that I read like Geralt. seven years ago, I don't necessarily trust my exact opinion on anymore because it's been so long. But it wasn't that bad. Um, I just really like their budget superhero team. Yeah. Oh, selection. Oh, oh God, is this what? What? Which <laughs> the selection? <laughs> which which um which series of The Bachelor is this? Well, it's actually based on The Bachelor. Um, <laughs> I'm smart. You you nailed it right there. Um, the selection, the Bridgerton Bachelor, I see. The it's it's really weirder than that. Um, it's set in the future where I, I don't know how much is going to be said in the trailer because I've not listened to this one. I've only seen it visually. Um, the selection is set in the far-ish future where America is in a caste system, but also has its own royal family, and the royal family has a tradition where they basically run the Bachelor. To determine who the next queen of the country will be. And I mean that sounds about right for America. Um yeah, and it's sort of a reality TV show ish situation because the media like overanalyzes all of the girls. So it's a weird mix between both of them. Um it's not a good book. I read it at a bad time in my life, I think, because I gave it like an okay rating. Mm. <laughs> and I don't think that it holds up. I think that I read a really bad book before and afterwards I was like, oh, this is a really fast, simple read. And I just got through it. The main reason actually is that there's very little romance in book one mm. because everything's so prolonged because the prince character and the main character, the main character, her name is literally America. Her name is like America Singer. It's ridiculous. Um, 
she is like forcibly drafted into the selection. <laughs> I, love, I love the concept of the draft, but you've been, you've been drafted to the Bachelor. Um, <laughs> it pretty much is that, though. And she kind of one has... of these days you're gonna get a letter through your door. So I remember one reason that I kind of like was okay with it is because she had a boyfriend at home that she liked. So she gets to the Bachelor Palace. And she isn't interested in the prince at all. And she's just at like later in the book, she just chats with him and is like, I'm not into you and I don't want to be here. And he's like, cool. And so they have a moment of like friendship that I really, it's a romance eventually, obviously. Of course, yes, of because course obviously. Is. But I really hate generic romances. So I think I was just, I read a bad book before and then I was so relieved by the notion that she wasn't immediately super into him and that she was much more like, I'd like to get out of here actually and go home. Like, I got a guy, this is I already, fine. I already got a man. Like, I really like that. What I can tell you also though about the selection, mm. which I find is so ridiculous, is that it is a dystopia. It has like a really bad cast system, right? And what are the costs? I don't remember, but they're okay. numbered. They're they're all they're, it's really boring. It's a cast system of like like four or what she's like in cast four or whatever, and that sucks. But it's a bad cast system. Right. And by the end of the series, she like winds up becoming queen because obviously she marries the prince. Obviously. They don't establish like that they change this really bad system. So they don't. <laughs> I don't know if they end the dystopia at all, but I know they definitely don't end I like the idea that she's just like a, a few years down the line just doing it again. To, she's like, just a class traitor no yes yes that is what the sequel series is <laughs> <laughs> i was about to get that <laughs> shoot oh yeah, no no. Th no that's what i'm about to get to because this is a bad system to have your bachelorette america getting a monarchy of really privileged rich people who whether or not the caste system is i don't know fixed in the series doesn't really matter there shouldn't be a monarchy at all no. but by like and she doesn't really think that like she's a sad poor person but by the end she's gone like full class traitor and she has a daughter and like the sequel series is the daughter going through the exact same like bachelor but it's now it's the bachelorette it's the bachelorette <laughs> And then there's a third series, which I don't know if that's her <laughs> granddaughter or not. I like to imagine it's her granddaughter. And that each of these books, like, the dystopia outside becomes more of, like, a complete wasteland. But we're still just doing The Bachelorette. <laughs> so that Dodging we can... the draft by being gay. <laughs> I think one of the characters is gay in it. I think that in the first series there is, like, a gay um, woman in it. Um, just there. She's just there, like, I, why am I here? I... I I don't really remember a lot of it, but yes. Anyways. For 35 girls, the selection is a chance of a lifetime. The chance to be swept up into a world of glittering gowns and jewels. Look at him go. Oh dear. The chance to win Prince Maxim's heart. Maxim? Yeah, it's Maxim. Look at his little party city crown. He looks like one of the more unfortunate British royals. I like how it specifically is 35 girls in the first round, but they couldn't afford that many. But it turns out, the life I always imagined might not compare to the future- Go, fetch! Family. I just really liked how he just threw the crown, not even towards them. He just this sort of- This weird party city crown. He just- he walks down the line, We don't and even then, see the Jap. Uh, not really, because- At least he hasn't got King Charles's hands. <laughs> He just, it's not at any girl in particular. He just tosses it like, it's a parallel line. Yeah, he's <laughs> tossing it in front of them. Just onto the floor where it clatters like cheap plastic. And breaks. <laughs> <laughs> they try and fight over it, it's a snap. I, like I at the end of Mean Girls. I assume. Like, up the crown. I, anyways, I just really enjoy that he just throws it vaguely in one direction. I got, we're nearing the end of these. Ignite me. Ignite me. Do you know about Ignite Me? Nope. Ignite Me is one of the 8 million series of YA books that is about a girl who when you touch her, you die. There are so many YA books still being published and still in the past just about girl touch? No, girl, you die. There are so many, and then we're Special still in our Boy. We're still in our rogue from X-Men era, It really is. And then there's Special Boy Who Touch? Mm. Yes. Th that, that special boy you can touch special boy you can touch <laughs> my god <laughs> yeah, no. i think that one of the most recent ones to be fair was special girl you can touch Ooh, and that's apparently a good book because it turns out if you make it gay apparently it's good because that girl serpent thorn i believe is also about a girl who's poisonous to the touch but i believe that that's a gay thing so 
good for her. Good for her. Um, but no, there are so many YA books with this exact same premise. Um, Ignite Me is rather infamously extremely bad. Extremely badly written, extremely bad in general, well, and still it's going called, strong. Because it's called Ignite Me, I assume they catch on fire. No, I think they just they die. They just die? I would love it if they exploded. I think they die. I think I, I don't want to read these books. There's like eight million of them also. But here, I just like... Everything Hello. has changed. Does has it? I finally figured out that I am strong enough. That maybe I can do what I was meant to do. Kill people? I have nothing left to lose. She's in the desert where they shoot all those 2000s era music videos. <laughs> Girl, help. Britney Spears is out there. Oh no, no, watch out. Everything. I love her in her grungy dress and she's whatever. She's changing out. Now she's into putting a, into a, a deadly cat suit. A deadly sparkly cat suit. Mm. <laughs> that fear will learn to fear me. Fear will learn to fear me. The emotion of fear will learn how to fear you. Yeah, I mean, the covers are kind of fun. Um, oh. I, they're just... I just really like her grungy dress as she wanders the desert, and then also just, like, she puts on her sparkly also, cat suit. Like, it's... <clears throat> the two men that are just there. Also in the desert, yeah. But who is this guy <laughs> in his, in his they, full black outfit in the desert? This man is here to sweltering. He's here to sell her drugs. <laughs> <laughs> he is standing like... Mm. This is me going to my weed dealer, you know? Just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a full I dress. Love to, I love to dress up to go to my plug and be like, yeah. hey... Well, he's also dressed up. He's so also he won't dressed be up. So he won't be noticed so by the we government. Won't, so he won't attract attention. <laughs> no, um, of course not. And then also different guy is it, yeah he's like doing some kind of campfire song or something i don't know <laughs> he's just loose in the um building a campfire in the desert to stay warm under that hot desert also, sun. like so like the, the like the telephone pole poles is really giving me like a fallout new vegas vibe for some reason <laughs> what i why is he building a fire I hey don't quick know. question i don't know it's, it's the like it's, it's like 2 p.m <laughs> why is he why is he building a campfire What's he doing? I can't tell you. I, I like to imagine that the book is actually just about one woman, the lone survivor. <laughs> <laughs> She's the courier. She's the courier. She's this is cur Courier 6. It's Mrs. Courier New Vegas. It's Mrs. <laughs> courier New Vegas. Let's gather around the campfire and sing. War. War never changes. She's getting drugs from the first guy by the wall, and she brings them to the campfire guy. Yeah, this is this is the plot of Fallout New Vegas. And yeah, she's gonna go find. <laughs> then she's gonna put on a sparkly cat suit and disappear. Yeah, she's gonna go find Benny to and kill she's gonna, him. Yeah, she's gonna shake her Charlie to the Ben Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why she has to put on That's her weird cat suit. That's why she has to dress suit. up to seduce Benny to get the platinum chip back for Mr. House. Yeah, no. exactly. This is the plot of Ignite Me. Yeah, exactly. It's Probably. I'm never. I'm never gonna read this. We're book. never gonna read this book. I think. Okay, is this the last one here? Yes, that's the last one there. You can see my recommendations for uh, two seconds. Um, so, anyways, hi. this has been a really long video. Yeah. Um, I'm going to edit it down or send it to my Your editor editor. to do it for me. Um, because I don't know if all of those were good, but I hope that you've had a lot of fun. I had a great um, time. We've learned so much. I really want to make my own really bad book trailer sometime. I think it would be so much fun <laughs> to just... combine everything that we've learned. We're just gonna have to get Emma to run in the field. Emma I has... I don't get to run in the field. Emma has the best YA look. Yes, but I have a white wig. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I have a long white wig. You do have so a long white wig. So I can put on my long white wig. I can run around through the field. I'm going to run around through the woods, knock at any of the dogs that live there in the images. I think and it would be funny if just a random dog started chasing I'd like you. to run by just nearby some dogs. I, I mean, the problem is that I have anxiety, but mm. it would be really funny to film it in the field across from the house because that field always has people in it and it would be really funny to do a dramatic <laughs> YA like run across run, the field and in the background people. there are people like you know it's playing like frisbee walk, they're walking their dog it's, yeah um, you know um, there's gonna be a King Charles Coronation celebration coming up oh um, I'm, I'm saying this because the funniest idea is for me to put on my YA outfit and run across the field when all of these in, children in the background in, in the, the background. background I don't want them to be clearly visible no. I want to be blurry I just think it would be funny if you could clearly see, like, the make a crown inflatable section or whatever for King Charles, and then I can run and look dramatically backwards, is all I'm saying. <laughs> and I think I could really do my YA narrator voice, which will be 
Rough. We're, just, we're just gonna have to get Sal for shots of men. I I know. <laughs> I I think that I would probably play every part in it. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> except for the fact I can't crouch with myself doing something. But I think that if I could do a back and forth of just like, who are you? You know, think, just like really dramatic. You killed my parents. You who killed my you? parents. I I, I, I don't know I don't anything know. about these things. I am from a world that's on fire. That's my YA protagonist yeah. voice. Um, you know, I'm yeah, just saying that, you know, not to exclude my lovely friend group in here, um, but it would I be think really it would be funny. funny if you are every part. It would be very funny. Thank you very much. No worries. Um, now we actually have to apparently do it or else I have to cut this out of the video. <laughs> no one knows that I, I ever discussed it. Anyways, um, wait, let me go to OBS to see even what our state is. Look at us. Hi. We can see ourselves again. We can see ourselves um, in OBS. Thank you very much. Uh, I never say like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And... Who knows? <laughs> if that autofocus has been going off this entire time, I'm gonna kill something. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw it do an autofocus zoom, and if it's doing that this whole video, I'm not- I'm not editing the video to remove it. I'm just gonna kill. That's for your suffering. Yeah, okay. And your suffering I'm alone. just gonna kill if that- if that has been going on this whole time. Ha <laughs> <laughs>